everyone, it's Michael, and it's already time for the May 2020 Orchid Collection update. This has been such a phenomenal month. There are so many things in bloom. There are so many plants in spike. It has just been a really great month for my plants. Now, uh, for that reason, we have a lot to talk about. I don't want to spend too much time on the intro, but I'll give you a quick breakdown. In regard to what I'm doing this month, I'm continuing to flush all of my semi-hydroponic containers once to twice a month, depending. Um, I am also watering in between those flushes with dilute nutrient solution. And some plants are being grown in natural light. Some plants are being grown under the LED grow lights. Now, the main difference this month is I have begun to explore water culture. And if you missed that video, I will link it below. I give a detailed overview about the process that I'm using and kind of what I'm doing. You'll see some of it throughout this video, but I'm really, really excited to see what this new grow method to me will yield for my plants. And it's not my intention to completely change my grow system or my, my grow protocols, but it is one other tool in my toolkit. So I'm looking forward to learning more about this. So without further lead in, let's just go ahead and jump in and take a look at the plants that have something new, different, and interesting happening this month. All right, my friends, jumping in with number three in the collection, we have my gorgeous, exquisite Wilsonara Aloha Sparks Halloween. Now this has skipped blooming for me for a year because I divided it, which was terribly, terribly executed. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it below. But um, it took a long time for this plant to recover, and you can still see the uh, damage. You can see that it has this rotting pseudobulb. You can see a lot of the leaves have died back and yellowed, but it is, um, it is healing. It put out this growth this year, and it gave me this stunning, stunning flower spike. So I'm not gonna mess with this right now because, I mean, even though I am inclined to trim back the leaves and remove the rotting pseudobulb, this plant wants to be left alone right now. It needs to recover a little bit more energy. I will feel better repotting this after, I don't know, maybe one or two more pseudobulbs grow, but it is clearly not struggling to create the energy for a flower spike, so that is wonderful. Another happy recovery story, we have number four in my collection. This is a no ID on Cidium. But um, I was pointing out last month that comparatively, look at the old growths and look at this giant juicy new bulb it has created. It is just so big. Um, so this is well on its path to recovery. The original plant, I actually, uh, the container fell off of a shelf and shattered. The plant itself broke into three pieces. I have since given away the divisions, but this has just had the damnedest time getting better. But after putting out this big fat bulb, look, it's finally, after four years of having this plant, it is giving me this gorgeous flower spike. So I'm so, so pleased to see this in bloom again. I'm so happy to see that it's recovering so significantly. Moving on to number seven in the collection. This is my two My Kids Dendrobium Nobili. Now it's blooming a little bit off of its regular cadence. So in January, it gave me three Herald blooms. Um, which I always describe as the blooms that tell me it's time to bring the plant out of dormancy. So I brought it out of dormancy, expecting it to flower in March, but it didn't. So I thought, okay, maybe it's just not gonna do it this year. But now here it is. If I take you in closer, you can see the new little flower buds starting to form on the canes. And it's just, it's very peculiar because it's happening much later in the game than it normally does. Um, and I'm not sure what that is a response to. Perhaps it's because this is getting really elevated light levels with my LED grow light. Maybe it's signaling the plant differently about what time of year it is, but um, I'm pleased to see it blooming again. It's so exciting. Now on to number eight in the collection. Just get a load of this beauty. Now I've already done a bloom profile video for this one. I will link it below, but this is my Banfield Ara Mystic Maze and just look how gorgeous. Ugh. My heart just breaks for this one. It's so stunning. It didn't do well for a while. I don't know, I'm not sure exactly where along the line in Los Angeles it started to do poorly, but it just was not doing well for a long period of time. I really think it was just insufficient light, but I put it under the LED grow light this year and it just clearly really, really loves that elevated light level. It's doing so well. Look at it now. It just, every single bud reached maturation, no bud blast, so, so gorgeous. Now on to number 11 in the collection. Oh, this is just quickly becoming my pride and joy. My Psychopsis Mendenhall Hildos. So it bloomed, um, I believe last month. I will link that bloom profile below. Um, but you can see it dropped the bloom and then rebloomed because it is a sequential bloomer. And just look at this gorgeous little samurai orchid. And if I can look forward to blooms like this for years to come, I will be a very, very happy camper. Oh, so beautiful. 
Now on to number 16 in the collection. This is my Catacetum Dapper Dots Nicolasa Tavares. Um, what I wanted to showcase on this one is it has been repotted, it's been brought out of dormancy, and it's losing its damn mind. This plant, I, this plant is so insane. It must be a middle child or something because it is so just doing whatever it wants to do. Look at this plant. It's so interesting. I This year I opted for sphagnum moss. So in the previous two years, I've had really healthy growth. You can see, look how large the bulbs were. But the thing is, is it kept blasting the buds. You know, all of the flower spikes would get to a certain point and then wouldn't reach maturity. And I think that's because semi-hydroponics just did not keep this plant as wet as it wanted to be. So this year I'm opting for sphagnum moss and it seems to be going really, really well. But just look how many new growths there are on it. I don't even, I can't even deal with this. So I'm hoping that the transition to sphagnum moss is what's going to preserve the flower, flower buds this year and allow me to see it all the way to fruition. Um, but we will see what happens from this point. I can't wait to divide it. It's too, it's too big. It stresses me out. Now moving on to number 17 in the collection. This is my Ask Ascenda Betty Mae Steel Carmella. And this is one of the first to go into water culture. Now it's interesting because this one wasn't intentionally placed in water culture. I just kept forgetting about it when it was in basket culture because it was behind a curtain. I never looked at it. And um, it had a beautiful flower spike on the way, which blasted and just dried up because I kept forgetting to water it. So this seems to be a much better suited method. Um, it has only been in this method for a period of about two to three weeks, but I'm not noticing any significant root rot. It seems to be agreeing with the plant. And you can see it's put out these lovely new leaves in just the short time that I've had it in water culture. So I, I don't know, perhaps it suits it, we'll see. Um, moving on to number 25 in the collection. This is my Epidendrum Green Hornet. This is one of my most trusty bloomers. Like I, I gave it really insufficient light levels. It's still bloomed. Um, but the remarkable thing about this one is it is a sequential bloomer, which I've known the entire time I've had it, but I've never really witnessed it do it. Um, and I think it's because it wasn't getting the ideal circumstances. But now that it is, Look at this. It's so dissimilar to the Psychopsis, for example, because the Psychopsis, you know, it just dries a bud and then it grows a new bud in its place. This one just continues to grow upward. So this flower spike, I'm trying to get it to focus. If you see, you have all of these new buds that are developing and coming in. It's really, really interesting. Um, so you can see that there are a lot more on the way, but that wasn't there about two weeks ago. There was only um, actually two blooms beneath this one. So it grew a bloom, lived its life, and then it dropped, and then this bloom opened, and then this bloom kind of grew out and opened. So it's kind of like, um, it almost has an oncidium pseudobulb type growth pattern in terms of how these are sequential bloomers. It just grows new flower buds above each bud. It's so peculiar and so wonderful, but I just love it. Look how cute these little blooms are. They're like little baby jellyfish. Love them so much, so happy to see this one in bloom still. Now onto number 26. I don't know if this is a happy or a sad story yet, but this is my Alisara Stellar. I really thought this one was on the verge of death. I got it repotted into just basic sphagnum moss with a little layer of Lekka at the bottom. And um, it's weird because I was waiting for the leaves to dry up, but it didn't. And I don't, I don't know if you can tell, but what it did instead was it created a tiny, tiny little baby pseudobulb. So the growth that I thought had been completely stunted and halted actually developed a pseudobulb no matter how small it was. So I'm hoping that this is a positive sign. Maybe it can put down a, a big enough root system to support new growth and really recover. Um, but I'm just watching this one closely. I'm just surprised it's made it as far as it has, but very pleased and very proud that it has. Now on to number 29 in the collection. I'm really excited about this one. This is my Eulafia Petersai. Now I recently made the executive decision to repot this into its classic cultivation method. I will link that video below. But um, what's remarkable about it is look how better suited it is. So these were my, um, I bought this bulb and then I immediately sunburned it, which is why the leaves are gone. But then I grew this bulb the year after, the tiny one. Then I grew this bulb last year. Um, and that's about as big as it's ever gotten for me. Ever since I put it into this new method, which is just using very, very fine, um, effectively draining kind of desert orchid mix, it's succulent mix. Um, it has started to put out these new roots, which is super exciting. It hasn't put out new roots in a very long time. And you can already see the, the new growth is taller than any of its pre-existing growths. So, you know, sometimes 
I don't know. I don't want to limit creativity, and I do think you can grow a lot of plants in a lot of different methods. This one does not like semi-hydroponics. It was never going to do well in semi-hydroponics. Nothing I did made it happy with that grow method. So I converted it back, and it seems to be doing incredibly well. Now we're going to jump to number 33 in the collection. This is my Dendrobium tangerinum, and I don't know how to feel about this one. I actually recently unpotted it, divided a rotting uh, cane off of it, and then I removed the top layer of sphagnum moss, so I only used a top dressing of sphagnum moss to really coax out new root growth, and it did. It did so very, very effectively. But then um, the sphagnum moss just stayed really, really dry because the plant wasn't really engaging with it at all. Once it had a healthy enough root system to get to the water reservoir, it just really didn't benefit from that layer of sphagnum moss. So I removed it. But the peculiar thing about this orchid is ever since I've had it, it grows these this black scale on it. And I keep hoping that the new growth will kind of break the cycle, kind of similar to number four. The new growths just slowly got healthier and healthier. But this one, you know, this is the newest growth. The largest cane is the newest growth. And you can see this dark blotchiness. And I, I don't know, it just might be diseased. If anyone has any insight about what that is, I would love to hear about it. But it does have a new growth coming in. Um, I'm excited about that, but I, I do anticipate it'll probably go the way of the others. So that really bums me out. I hope it recovers, but um, I'm just not quite sure what's happening here. Now on to number 36 in the collection. This is my Fred Clark Yara SVL Black Pearl After Dark. And just look at how vigorous and happy and healthy this is. Just like number 16 in the collection, my Catacetum Nicolasa Tavares, I put this in straight sphagnum moss and it just has really, as you can see, responded super positively to it. Healthy, vigorous growth. It's gotten so big so quickly, which is pretty standard for this type of orchid. But um, I'm just so pleased to see how well it's doing. I'm also really enjoying growing these under artificial lights because when you grow catacetums in windows, they are so directionally inclined. They lean so heavily towards the source of light that these plants, when they get gigantic, are almost unmanageable because they're just a giant fan of leaves pressing against your window or pressing away from your window um, if you're rotating it. So I just like growing this under lights because it just comes up perfect and straight and nice and um, it makes it a little bit more easy to navigate around. So very, very pleased to grow this one under lights. Now on to number 46 in the collection. This is my Oncidium Twinkle Light Pink. And look at this little baby still in bloom. It is starting to drop blooms, but this has been in bloom for quite some time. Again, there is a bloom profile for this. Actually, I'm just gonna link the playlist of all of my bloom profiles. If you wanna look at any of these blooms, go ahead and check them out. Um, but I'm so excited because the third flower spike it produced this year is now beginning to mature some buds. So I think my projection of this being in bloom for two to three months might actually be accurate. So keep my eyes peeled on this one. And then last, I'm gonna show you my Cymbidium Murasaki Sinens. This is not one I showcase very often, but it's doing something really bizarre. So I gave this one a winter dormancy, just like I give my Dendrobium nobilis. So I just cut off watering altogether um, from about Halloween all the way through, you know, approximately Valentine's Day. And um, what's peculiar about this is I've never been sure that you can actually grow these in semi-hydroponics or even indoors because they require a temperature drop to spike. But um, it has now put out two little thingies here. Now, because there is a new root growth coming off of one of them, I believe that is a new growth. And it somehow seems unlikely to me that it's putting out two twin new growths right next to each other. So I'm hoping that one of these might be a flower spike, but who knows? I might just be, you know, expressing my wishful thinking. Jumping back in with number 51 in the collection, we have all four of my wedding day Phalaenopsis orchids. So these were the orchids that were actually present at my wedding to Justin. Um, of course, I have such beautiful, happy memories tied to them, and I just love that they bloom in unison. Look at them, they're all doing the exact same thing. They have the same directionality because they're all being grown in the same window. Now, once these are done blooming, I'm actually going to um, really split them up. I'm gonna pick my favorite one, which is probably gonna be this one, and then I'm gonna give each of my three sisters one of the other plants, because they were all present for that beautiful day, and I think they would love to have it in their homes. Now, um, something that I do want to highlight here is what happened to this one. Now, if we come in close, you can see I accidentally snapped off part of the flower spike when I was watering. And I have video of the day that happened about two weeks ago, and I'm going to play it right here. Ugh, I couldn't be any more devastated. I was being clumsy when I was watering my Phalaenopsis orchids, and I accidentally snapped off the tip of the flower spike. And look at it. It had so many buds on the way. It was branching to make more buds. It does still have this one, which I think will continue on and create some 
buds for me, but it was just going to be a much more robust display than it is now. <sighs> Such a bummer. Now, as devastated as I was, that break created something really remarkable, which was the insight into what this plant does when it is intent on blooming. Now, if we come back in, of course, it already had this branch that was growing and has continued to develop, but the remarkable thing is if we come in here, do you see what I'm seeing? In the node right underneath the break, it created a new flower spike. And then even on this portion here, this one is branching as well. And it's just the darndest thing because it was as if this plant said, I'm going to create three branches and no matter how it was impacted by the breakage, it still did it. I just think it's remarkable. Um, so that's really, really exciting. I'm so curious to see how this progresses. Now we're gonna jump to number 56 in the collection. This is my Meltonia Sunset. And as I mentioned in my exploring water culture video, I recently divided this plant. Now I did have it in semi-hydroponics with a top dressing of sphagnum moss, but the plant was drinking down its water reservoir so aggressively and so quickly. And look, even now, even though it is sphagnum moss all the way to here, it's still drinking down its reservoir really quickly. So I resolved that I wanted to repot this into sphagnum moss and it actually pretty instantaneously impacted the pl plumpness of the bulbs. The bulbs were getting a bit desiccated from me not keeping up with watering. Um, and even the leaves are kind of prone to doing that accordion thing when they don't get water as readily as they want, you can see here. So um, this has actually bounced back really, really quickly. I only did this division maybe a week ago and perhaps this flower spike was already on its way, but if I take you in here, you can see it is developing a beautiful little flower spike. So this one seems to be perfectly happy. Now, as I mentioned, um, I took the other division and I placed it into water culture. And this one is also doing pretty great. I, it's interesting because the pseudobulbs are plumping back up. It is drinking down its water. I don't know if you would call it a water reservoir in this scenario, but it's drinking down its water pretty readily. And it seems to be pretty uninterrupted by the division. So I'm gonna to continue to monitor this, um, but I am really curious to see how this goes. Um, I love my Meltonia Sunset so much that I didn't want to just unpot it and put it directly into water culture. You'll notice I haven't taken any of my real um, OG plants and put them into water culture because I'm not quite sure how they would behave. So when I have um, the ability to explore or experiment with a division of one of my collection, I will do that in water culture, but I don't think I'm just gonna transition them outright. Now moving on to number 57 in the collection. This is my No ID Vanda. This was another one of the very first to go into water culture. And I put this one accidentally into water culture because again, I just was not keeping up with its water needs when it was in basket culture. So I, I put it in this container and it took me a while to realize that what I was doing was even water culture. But you can see, look how happy and vigorous its root system is. It seems to really, really enjoy full water culture. But um, for the time being, you can just see from the root system, it's doing very, very well. Now jumping to number 58 in the collection, we have my Corianthes Macrantha X self. And what I wanted to highlight here is look at this beautiful new growth it's put out and look how it is acclimating to this grow method. It's putting out new roots all over the place. So that's really positive and exciting. I do find it challenging to care for this plant just because again, I am very absent-minded and I forget to soak these baskets, I just do. Um, so I'm concerned about this grow method in the long run, even though it's demonstrating that it's effective and the plant likes it. Um, I'm not sure that it's effective for me, or should I say, I'm not sure I will be effective for this plant. So moving on to number 59 in the collection, we have my Cloesia Rebecca Northern Maccabi. And I'm so excited because I didn't know if this one was coming back. Um, it, it was in dormancy for a really, really long time. But I went ahead and got it unpotted. You can see it has a brand new growth on the way. It's coming in pretty quickly. And I'm just waiting till the roots get a bit longer before I resume watering. So let me actually take you in a little closer. But yeah, this, I, they, they are sensitive to being watered before they are ready. So I just wanna make sure that the roots get to maybe another inch long before I start. You can see those green leads kind of all over the place, but I want them to get a bit longer before I resume watering. Now I'm filming this one out of sequence because I totally forgot to take it off of the shelf where I keep it displayed. But this is my Ballara Peggy Ruth Carpenter, number 60 in the collection. And believe it or not, it is still in bloom. And the only thing I really wanted to showcase on this one is, other than its wild beauty, is how interesting it is when the blooms start to drop because they go completely pale. They lose all of their spotting and then the blooms turn a shade of brown and drop. But it's just such an interesting gradient because they stay so vivid for so long and then turn into this. 
So interesting. This is my Burtfield Eileen Meltoniopsis. This is a plant that I have struggled with for a very, very long time. Um, another one of the reasons that I opted to put this one into water culture, I just wasn't succeeding already, so I figured if it declines, I'm not gonna be brokenhearted. Um, but remarkably, look what is happening with this plant. It has only been in water culture for a period of about, I don't know, a week or two, um, but it's putting out all of these new roots. It seems to really, really enjoy the um, elevated humidity of being inside of this container. It's drinking down its water really quickly. Um, so I don't know, I hope the positive momentum continues. This is my Potinara Miki Kobayashi D. And the thing that I'm most excited about is there is a lot more to come on this plant. So this is the one that I placed in water culture. It happens to be the one that is doing the best at the moment. But um, I don't know if you recall, this plant unpotted itself from semi-hydroponics. It never took to that grow method. The root system that was holding it in the container slowly died and then it literally fell out of the container because there was nothing to hold it or bind it to the container. So I had this gigantic Potinara plant just sitting out on my counter in open air, bare rooted for a long time. The bulbs started to desiccate. So I said, you know, I need to give this some water. I'll give it some wet dry cycles. So again, this is one of the plants that I accidentally transitioned to water culture. And it responded so quickly by putting out a crazy flush of new roots. And if you come in even closer, you might notice that the, um, the roots are branching now as well. So it's really, really taking quickly and immediately to this grow method. Now, the thing that excites me the most about this is I divided this plant. So this is one out of four divisions of the original Potinara plant that I had. I put the other divisions, one in bark medium, one in sphagnum moss, and one I repotted into semi-hydro to see if it would adapt. Now, I'm gonna do a video where I kind of compare and contrast all of these different grow methods. It's all the exact same plant. So I think it'll be, um, it'll offer some interesting insight into what this particular plant prefers. This is my adorable Cattleya Pamilla Var Alba. I am so excited about this one because it was another one that I was having a hard time caring for, but I popped it in water culture. It drinks down its water so, so quickly. And um, I wanted to do this one in full water culture, but it, it's kind of insisting on its own will and volition to be <laughs> semi-water culture. So I had its roots in full contact with the water, but it drinks down the water so quickly that if a, you know you leave it for a period of two or three days and it kind of ends up giving itself its own dry cycle because it's taken so much of the water. So it has its own little sweet spot. It likes to dry out for a period of about four days and it's just doing incredibly well. So I'm very pleased. Now jumping to number 67, this is my Sergio Ara Yucasuka story. And this one is also acclimating very, very nicely. It has a bunch of new growths coming in. It has a bunch of luscious root tips starting to develop. Now actually, if I can take you in, you'll see a little bit more clearly. But um, you can see right inside, it's starting to produce a bunch of little green root tips and get more comfortable in its container. So this one seems to be transitioning quite nicely to uh, water culture. Now jumping to number 68 in the collection, this is another very happy story. This is my uh, Brasso Lelio Cattleya. And you can see just like the others, it is doing quite well. You can see some of the old roots rotting away, but while that happens, you can see other roots really beginning to establish. This one has interesting brown root tips. So even though it looks like it's unhealthy, it really is. But you can see it's those are venturing down straight into the water. So as you can see, I've only transitioned a limited assortment of my plants into water culture. And it's generally the ones that are newest to my collection because I don't have an intense emotional rapport with them. But I also have the ones that I accidentally converted into water culture because of necessity or happenstance. So I'm so curious to see how things continue to progress, but this has been a really, really great month. I am so, so pleased to see so many things in bloom and to see everything looking so gorgeous. And I can't wait to see what next month brings. And with that, that's pretty much it. Thank you as always for choosing to spend your time with me. If you have any questions, concerns, or feedback, go ahead and leave it in the comments section below. Be sure to support one another in the comments section because I'm so seldom available to do so. Don't forget to click subscribe and have a beautiful rest of your day. Mwah! Bye friends.